What's up guys, it's Wasabi and I'm back with another review. Today we have a new keyboard sent to me by Chilkey. Thank you Chilkey. What as always with the content on this channel, these are my thoughts, personal opinions and experiences with the product. And today we have the ND65CSHE. Now here's a quick look at the packaging because that's what you pay for too. First you got the quick start guide with all the key combinations for media and lighting controls, the keyboard itself and the USB-C cable. And that's pretty much all that's included inside the box. Now before we go any further, let's manage some expectations here real quick. As you can tell from the unboxing, there's not much that was done with the packaging and accessories. And that's because Chilkey offers budget keyboards. They are a brand under the company Wuche Studios and this keyboard that we have today is a first Hall Effect keyboard under the Chilkey brand and is available for a price of $129. I took this keyboard on because I thought it was pretty cool with what they did with the design of the case. There are no sharp corners with the design. Kinda reminds me of a loaf of bread and you know I like bread. This one in particular is in a white colorway, it's got an electrostatic coating and it's sort of a rough grainy texture with the finish. Very simple looking 65% layout keyboard on the top side and on the bottom I do like the little crest sticking out and it's a very nice contrast in this white colorway. And on the back of the keyboard you have the LED strip which is pretty cool. It's not meant for you to look at but for it to illuminate the surface of your desk behind the keyboard. For a budget the Hall Effect keyboard, the build quality is great and feels as expensive and as well built as some of the Hall Effect keyboards up in the price range. It is on the heavier side for its size and on the inside it's got a gasket mount, an aluminum plate with plate mounted stabilizers and that's pretty much it. There are no silicone sound dampeners or any internal layers for acoustic treatment. This is a very standard 65% layout. There are no dedicated media or volume controls. What bothers me most is how you control the volume with the default way that it works. For for example, to change the volume, you have to press the function key plus spacebar to put it in function lock mode and then press plus or minus to increase or decrease the volume respectively. Not sure why they did it this way because it feels like they added in extra steps to something that should be very simple. This was something I did not enjoy so much about using this keyboard right out of the box. Thankfully, using the software, you can customize the function layer and assign controls to the keys so you don't have to go into function lock mode to control your media. Double shot PBT cherry profile keycaps that feel sorta of smooth to the touch. Not a texture that I prefer for gaming but for regular typing it's completely fine. Legends are very clear these are not shine through keycaps which in my opinion is fine because it's very fitting for a keyboard of this design. You get Gateron KS37B as the only switch option. South facing LEDs and a dual rail structure. The switches are factory looped and are very smooth right out of the box. Initial force of 30 and a bottom out force of 50 both with a variance of plus minus 10 gram force and a total travel distance of 4 millimeters with a variance of 0.2. KS37B switches are quite a common switch which you will even see on more expensive keyboards because of how smooth and stable the keystrokes are. All effect features, it's got adjustable actuation, rapid trigger, it has mod tap, dynamic keystroke and toggle key as well. These five features are usually what you would expect on most Hall effect gaming keyboards today. There is a big issue that I experienced with this keyboard though. After you adjust your rapid trigger and actuation settings on the software, for some reason the escape key doesn't work and the only way to get it to work again is by doing a factory reset. And that is unfortunately quite a deal breaker for me and something that I need to mention for anyone who wants to get this keyboard. Hopefully just my unit but I did write them an email to let them know about this when I got my unit some time back and so hopefully this is something that has already been fixed. This keyboard sits at a fixed angle, there are no adjustable feet. It doesn't sit too high but it would be more comfortable if you have a wrist rest. And though it has a gasket mount design, there is not a lot of flex to it. Keyboard flex is not something I prioritize when choosing a keyboard for gaming because I prefer a stiffer and more consistent feel with the movement keys. And for this keyboard, even without acoustic treatment layers in the build, it already gives a rather pleasant typing sound experience as it is. Considering that this is a Hall Effect keyboard which are known to sound and feel pretty bad. Now here's a quick sound test to give you a better idea of how this keyboard sounds.
This space bar doesn't sound all that pleasant though, but the typing experience overall is pretty good and something that gives this keyboard in this category its value for the price. RGBs are very bright and you have a good number of effects to choose from. Keycaps are not shine through, so it's pretty much a backlit key lighting effect. So if you want more RGBs to match with the theme of your setup, you can consider aftermarket shine through keycaps for a more vibrant lighting experience. Connectivity wise, this is wired only with a polling rate of 1000 Hz. Compatible with Windows 10, Windows 11, Linux, and Mac OS. It doesn't have an 8000 Hz wired polling rate, which is becoming the new standard for gaming keyboards. But for a budget keyboard of this price, I think 1000 Hz is good enough. I wouldn't say that 8000 Hz offers a noticeably different experience, but it is something that people will come to expect for a standard polling rate as time goes on. The keyboard uses a simple web based software. It's the exact same software that Mellatrix Hall Effect keyboard uses because they are pretty much under the same company. So QMK and VIA are not supported. The software is a simple and clean interface. You can remap your keys, record macros, and set your actuation point and adjust RGB and effects. Rapid trigger setting can be adjusted here. Adjust all keys, one being the least sensitive and 20 being the most. And under the advanced tab, you can set individual actuation and reset points for individual keys. This is a keyboard I think would be great for someone who does a lot of typing and occasionally plays games. And it's got rapid trigger and adjustable actuation which is mostly popular for games like Veterans and CS2. With my experience, it's been perfectly fine for gaming. With most keyboards, it's not so much of the speed you notice, but more of the stability and consistency with every use. There isn't much to impress except for the build quality and how it feels when you type on it, which is more than enough for casual consumers looking for a budget option in this category. Now, what are three things I like about this keyboard? How it feels for typing for a pre-built budget Hall Effect keyboard is pretty good. The build quality the and materials is enough to impress in this price range. And the third thing is a simple and easy to use web-based software. Software is a big part of keyboards in this category and the most important thing is keeping it simple with the UI so that you can quickly get things set up and adjust as you find your perfect settings. Now what are three things I feel could be improved with this keyboard? The default method to access the media and volume controls is not at all convenient. Though it is something you can work around by remapping the keys on the software, it will be something you will have to reset again if, say, you do another factory reset. It would be so much more user-friendly if it follows what most keyboards on the market do. The cable is too short for larger setups, and if you notice in some of my keyboard reviews, I'm using a Wooten cable. If you see me using a Wooten cable, the one that the product comes with is way too short. For stock cables, I feel it's best to give a longer one so more people can use it right off the box, and if they want to, they can use their own custom cable. The last thing is packaging design and product design makes zero sense. I know it's a budget keyboard, but the packaging makes you feel like you're getting a very different, much cheaper keyboard. I would suggest a simple white box with the model name and logo, which would be a lot more fitting for a keyboard of this design and quality. Sometimes less is more. So final thoughts and what I think of its value. Well, the only thing that makes this keyboard stand out for me is the typing experience for the money. Except the spacebar, which sounds a little off compared to everything else. From a gamer's perspective, if this keyboard doesn't fall short of features that Hall Effect gaming keyboards have to offer. But at the same time, the keyboard as a whole doesn't appeal so much to me considering the many options on the market today. You know, if I ask myself, would I save a bit more money to get something else? Considering that a gaming keyboard is something I use daily and I enjoy a little excitement with what I use on my setup, I would. But you know, that's just me. I won't discount the fact that every gamer has their preference. So if this keyboard speaks to you, you, then by all means go for it. This is a simple budget Hall Effect keyboard and it does offer enough value with the experience and quality for the price. You know budget Hall Effect keyboard releases like this raise the standards of consumer expectations which push brands to innovate and be creative with their releases which I see is a very good thing for everyone. Anyway thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video or found it helpful in any way please leave a like and subscribe to support the channel and I guess I'll see you in the next one.